All right, so we're ready to do the stab and the wing and the rudder, okay? So first I make forms like this. This is a 16th inch bass and I cut it and get the shape. Then I use pencil and draw where the ribs are. I use pencil so the dope doesn't blur it. And then I usually put about three coats of dope on just to seal it up. Then I also then just put it under a book for a few days just to make sure it's nice and flat. And then the last thing I do is cut these so that that's where the ribs go in. That way you can get the ribs in. Okay. Now for the wing I'm using tapered spars. They taper from about 0.050 at this end to about 0.040. And to cut those you have to kind of center the wood in the stripper here. And then figure out how much to back off there and how much to back off there to get the sizes you want on the spar. Now if you like geometry like I do, it's not that difficult to figure out. But if you just want the formulas... This is in a May 2019 model aviation, and here you go. There's a little article, and it shows you with the, here it is, with the, uh, you know, Harlan stripper, how to do this. See, the other way is like that, and you waste more wood, but this is pretty nice, and it's pretty easy. So I already cut some spars, and now I'm going to join them in the middle. I'll show you that, and then we're going to get the wingtips soaking. The wingtips, I use thinner wood. It's .040 by .020, and then I'm just going to wrap it around the tips. I'll try showing you that. Okay, so now we have one of the spars made. Here it is. I'm not sure you can see. Maybe like that. And uh, it's thicker in the middle and it tapers. Okay, so that's going to go right here. That's ready to go. I have it slightly oversized. And here's the other one. So I just glue it in the middle with a little white glue. You know, I just put a dab on here and then I just put a little dot. And I just glued it there right in the middle. And you got to make sure that's nice and straight and flat. So then I let it dry like this for a while. Okay. So then that'll be ready to go. And uh, um, I'll soak the tips. And we'll get those on. Okay. So I've had the tip strips, which are uh, 0 .020 by 0 .035 soaking. You know, a half an hour is enough. An hour if you want. There's no sharp ends here. So I put it in place. Okay, and now it'll still slide this way if you pull it. So you got to kind of hold it in place. And the secret here to a good wind is you got to keep the tension and not let it kink. You don't want to pull too tight. You're going to break the balsa. Now I kind of came around with my other hand. And there you go. So I'm just going to hold it there and get a magnet in place. Okay, so we got a nice roll tip. Now there's one other thing here. Okay, now you might think you're okay. Just leave it alone. But one thing I've noticed when I come back is it, it springs out because the balsa is shrinking and it can still spring out. So what I just do to prevent that, you know what to happen is I just take a magnet and you really don't even have to touch it. Just put it up close and that'll prevent it from springing out. And now you'll be fine when it dries. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. I got to do the other one and then I'll splice in the spars. All right, we got the leading and trailing edges attached, okay? And what I'd recommend here is when I'm, I'm doing it like here, I basically let the this spring out just a little bit, you know, 30 seconds, so you have a little extra room there, and then I cut it, because if it's too short, you can't add any, so you can always trim it down, all right? So then I cut it, and then you'll usually have enough where you can just push it up nice and tight. So then the next part I did is I put in the ribs. There's only four of them. And I use my rib slicer as I show you in the prop video. Okay. And uh, again, I want to emphasize there, I, I always use my headset here. This I like because you could just grab it with one hand and put it right on. And you really got to glue the ribs that way um, so you can see the glue. And again, I use full strength tight bond. And the part I like about that is you just get a little dot on the rib and it just tacks right away. So you got to get it in and get it nice and vertical. You really only have about 10 seconds and it sets up. Okay. So uh, we're about ready to take this off. I'll show you one more thing I do before I bring it downstairs to cover. Okay, here's the wing. It's off the jig. So we're ready to bring it downstairs and cover it. Now the last thing I like to do is, before I, I cover it, is I like to get it ready for the you know, the uh, incidents before, okay? So what I usually do is I'll make a little like V groove right where about where I want it. You have to be very careful with this. I do it with the, you know, magnifying glasses on. And then I just crack it a little bit 
so that it's ready to go. You can probably see the wingtip is sitting up a little bit because I crack it on both sides, all right? And, you know, I, I like to do that before I cover because I don't want to have any razor blades around the covering and things like that. You could also use a toothpick and just kind of make a little indent. And sometimes I'll do that in my little V, okay? Uh, the other thing is if something happens, the tip pops off or something like that, 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 that's fine. You can just glue it back on and then give it another go. Now, I know some people like to do it after, but I like to do it before. This way, after I cover it, all I have to do is it's already cracked. It's just position that up and hit it with some glue and we're ready to go. Okay, so I'm in my indoor basement workshop. I have another one that's outdoor and it's really just a cage that I outfitted as a shop. And I'm getting ready to cover the wing. So here you can see I make some forms. And these are like whatever scrap I had. An eighth quarter inch square or three eighths. I think this one is five sixteenths. It doesn't matter. So I make those. Make a nice, uh, you know, make sure it's the right size to get what you want. And then I glue little reinforces in the corner like that. I also keep little scrap pieces around like this. Because if I just want a smaller piece, I can tape that in there. You can see I did that when I was doing the stab. Okay, so you save a little covering. Now the F1R wing is huge, so I have a frame here for that, okay. So here's how I'm going to do that. So I showed you before you can roll out the OS film on uh, paper towels if you want because it's static and that'll stick. But here's another way and this is a little easier. Let me show you this. So this is just a foam core board, okay. And the Mylar, I'm sorry, the Mylar, the OS film will lay nicely on that because of the static again. So what I did is I rolled it out and then you just lightly drag a razor blade to kind of slid it on the end. And then I crumbled it up, okay, and I showed you that in the uh, prop video so you can see me crumbling it there. Then I laid it back down again, all right. Now if I was going to use like spray glue or something like that on the frame, I'd spend time getting it nice and smooth and things like that. But now I just use water, so you don't really even have to do that, okay? I just spray the frame with water, and it'll stick right up. Let me try to do this on camera. Let me move that back. It's extremely tight in the cage, so it's a little tricky to do these things. But I'm going to have to do this on the side here. But I'm just going like this. If you can see a little, I don't want to get it on the board. Oh, oops, got the wrong side. Let me do it on... Well, no, that's... Uh, let me do it on this side, actually. Okay. The flat side where so these are in the back even though it doesn't really matter so now i'm going to spray it i'll let you just hear me spraying it yeah you don't have to do that much just enough to get it wet i mean i know some people think you have to soak it but you don't i'm just going around it a couple times and that should be pretty wet now all right and then i'm going to go lay it on the film here like here and uh, let's see, that looks good. There you go. And then I'm gonna just get the ends up a little bit. And here, I had a little rip there, so I wanted to make sure that was off. Okay, and then there, just a little bit. I'm just bunching it up a little bit and get rid of that excess. And you'll see now, see, it just lifts right off. And here it is in the frame. And this, of course, is the size you're gonna use. So the next, Thing I do the side uh, the next thing I do is I just smooth it out a little bit you can see here okay I'm just gonna smooth it so that uh, the wing lays in there nicely and when I get that ready I'll show you that part so the water's nice I mean you got a good 10 minutes it's not gonna dry out right away and you can see I'm just kind of you see you can tighten it up if you want take out some of the wrinkles that's kind of what I'm doing all right doesn't take very long just a few minutes so let me do that and then I'll get back and I'll show you the next part. Okay, so here we go. So I got it on and I, you know, pretty much just smoothed it out. Now, the mistake you're going to make, all of us make as beginners on this, is you make it too tight. Don't make it tight. If you make it tight and then you push the wing in there, guess what? It's going to be like a pretzel. All right, so you can see mine's waving a little bit. It's a little loose, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is, you can see I have the wing on my trusty box there. So I'm going to spray the 3M over it, just as I showed you in the prop video. And again, you have to remember, you don't spray directly on the wing. You spray over the wing and you let it settle onto the wing. Now the last thing I'm going to show you here is, then after I've sprayed it, I pick it up. You've got to be careful and not have sticky on your hand. And I like to just drop it onto the frame. 
Now, I know some other people like to have the wing down and then they put the frame on top of it, and that's also fine. But I used to do microfilm, and this is how we did microfilm, so it's just force of habit. So the only advice I could give you here is I use tweezers, but I actually dip them in a little bit of, uh, you know, grease or, uh, you know, what do you, what do you call it there, the other stuff, uh, just to, on the end so it doesn't stick, all right? Uh, you know, like the Vicks VapoRub or whatever it is. And... Um, so it doesn't stick and then what I do is I'll just so I'll have the wing sprayed I'll pick it up and I'll just hold it like this move it nice and nice close and then just very simply drop it on there you go boom and you can see it already looks pretty good now of course I'll push it down I didn't spray it yet because it's too crowded in here to do this on camera okay so I'm going to spray it and drop it on and then we just got to trim it out Okay, so here you go. I just dropped the wing on it. All right, it came out pretty nice, looks good. So all I gotta do now is get the soldering iron and just go around the edges here and trim it out. And again, I, I usually leave a little piece here and there so it's kind of hanging and then right at the end, I'll trim those so it's off, okay? So I'm gonna trim it out and uh, then we'll bring it out stairs. Now, the other thing I do usually after I trim it out is I'll kind of go around and sort of pat it down a little bit Okay, or you could turn it over and put it on a flat surface and, you know, just pat it down a little to make sure the film's really on there. All right, so I'll cut it out, bring it upstairs. All right, so here's the wing. I got it covered, so now you can see I put in the dihedral. Also, this is the way I hold it down without putting any stress on the bowl, so you just put a magnet far away and let the toothpick hold it down. So now you can see, of course, it's going to loosen the covering here when you push this all the way up. So the way you can tighten that up is you can just get a brush and uh, you use water, but I use saliva. It's nice and sticky, so just lick the brush. I know it sounds kind of crude, but that's all you got to do. And then if you run it along there, it should tighten it up. Now I'm going to try to do this live just to show you. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to come in here and... You can see it pulls the covering, whoops, up to the rib. And there we go. I don't know if you can see there or not, but it tightened it up a bit and you can go over it more than once. So you do this and uh, we're ready for the next part, which is just to put the tube on. I'll show you that. And then we're almost done. Okay, so now I'm putting the rear, uh, the uh, wing tubes on. Here they are, a couple of them on the wire here. And I showed you how to make these in the prop video. These are the ones with the little CA, so they're kind of plasticized. And so what I do is I just take one in my hand and I put a drop of Ambroid or Duco, whatever you're using on it. And then I put it in place and I make sure I carefully get it on the dot that shows where it's supposed to go. Okay, so I get a position and then I wait a few seconds because it's going to set. Now you can see what I did here is I set the wing up so it hangs over the edge of the workboard a little bit so I have room to do this. And then I'm using the toothpicks to keep the rest of the wing in place. Now after it's beginning to start to set, you know, it gets tacky, then I'll slip in uh, the bottom, uh, the rear wing post, okay? And that's so I can line it up. So I like to do the rear wing post first. I put a little red on the front uh, so I always know where the front is. And I just do that as square as possible. So if you let it hang like that, you can check and make sure it's nice and square, okay? Now you have to remember, you also have to check it from the side this way to make sure it's not out too far or in too far. It's gotta be square in that direction as well, all right? Uh, also make sure you let the glue dry a little bit because you don't wanna glue the post in there, okay? And uh, so I'll let that dry and then I'll do the front post. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I mount the front wing tube, okay? Now, actually, this comes in really handy. This is one of the little wing mounts that I use to put it in the box. Uh, I showed you this in the My First F1R video, okay? And it's also useful now. So what I did is the back is totally dry. So I actually slipped on the uh, wing tube in the back. I don't slip it on in the front. You can see here. Uh, what I do again is like before, I glue on the tube, let it set for a second, and then I just have a little spare posting to check the alignment. So I make sure it does it's square this way, front and back. 
also sideways. Now there is one little thing. I like to put a little bit of offset like this because that way when you put the wing in, you see, it'll lift up this uh, front leading edge. That's usually called uh, wash in. And that helps with the burst. All right, at the burst, it's trying to twist the wing and a little wash in will keep it up. Now you just got to go very, very little on this because I've noticed on F1R that you're going to have twist on the fuselage anyway and that's going to give you wash in. So I usually put this almost perpendicular, but just a little itsy snitsy to the left, okay? And again, this is something where I use uh, Ambroid or whatever, Duco, something you can thin with acetone, uh, okay, like here. Because, you know, this is something you might have to reposition later on. Now, you also got to make sure that you get it right on the dot so that the wing is squared. If there's any skew on the wing, that's going to be like adding thrust. So you don't want to do that. You got to be careful with that. All right, I'm going to make the stab next. Okay, so now I put the stab and the rudder on. Okay, and for that I again use Ambroid because uh, you might want to change the stab tilt. So I wanted so I could thin it with acetone. You could use Duco or Sigman as well. Okay, and the way I have it right now is I usually raise the left tip here and uh, that turns it a little bit to the left. All right, not much, just a little bit. Now, the one tip I'd have here, and I know I, I've heard other people say this, is they glue it on, it looks nice. You come back the next day, and all of a sudden, it's like drooping down. Okay, I've seen this with F1L, and I've had some uh, friends tell me this as well. Now, the reason that happens is because the Ambroid shrinks, and over 24 hours, it continues to shrink. All right? So, what you got to do here is I just put a little dot right on the top. You don't want to, like... I know us modelers later on you'll put a little bit like this on the sides that's what's going to pull it down you can't do that so i just put a little dot right on the top and if you need a little extra then i'll put a little dot in the front or in the back on the top because that way if it shrinks it's not going to pull it down okay all right so the stab's on uh the next thing i'm going to do is uh find the balance point and then finally i can put in the wing post and uh we're done Okay, now I'm going to show you the last part. So I'm ready to put on the wing post, all right? And what you do is you put it all together except for the wing. So what I'm going to do is I put the, the prop on. Let me try to get it in frame here in a second. And also you got to put the motor on that you're going to use. And here it is. And then what I do is I just hang a thread around it, you can see here. And you just move it back and forth until you find the center of gravity, all right? That's pretty close right there. And then you mark that with a little pen. Okay, and then I have a formula that tells you where to locate the uh, rear post. So you have a constant margin of stability. About 5% is usually what I use. All right, so I'm going to do this and get the rear post in. All right, here we go. This is actually my fourth F1R. You might notice the little blue on the tail boom. And if you go back and look in the earlier videos, you'll see that was a spare tail boom I had sitting on my uh, form. All right. The blue is actually, it says 0.008. It's a stamp that says the thickness. I thought it was nice. I put it on the top. All right. So it came out about a half a gram. And again, I did the whole thing. Everything is built basically with white glue, except for attaching the stab. Okay. Uh, attaching the wing post and the post. Uh, the wing tubes, and I think that's it. Everything else is white glue, all right? Except for the wire, also when the wire to the balsa and also in the prop, I use Ambroid, okay? And I, I should probably say one thing about that is I know Ambroid's not available anymore, so you can use Duco and Sigment. I've heard that they're both similar, as long as you can thin it with acetone. Now, here's another thing I heard, uh, and this was many, many years ago, I heard if you let the glue dry out first, it gets rid of some preservatives and it's better, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm not going to do that. But about 10 or 20 years ago, when I got back into it, I had some old Ambroid that I dried up, so I gave it a shot, and I thought it made the best glue, uh, glue I've ever used, so I always do it that way. So what I do now is I squeeze out a bunch, let's say I want to make, uh, you know, like, and, and just in a little cup like this, I'll squeeze out a half ounce, an ounce, or maybe an ounce, let's say. That, when that dry, and then let it dry, and it actually might take a day or two, when that's dry, it's going to be about half the volume, all right? And believe it or not, even though this is plastic, you could just peel it right out of there. And also, you're going to see that Ambroid is kind of flexible. I think this is what makes it good. It's not brittle, okay? When I was a kid, the Duco then was brittler, and I don't know if that's true now. 
But anyway, after I let it completely dry, I just cut it into thin little strips so I could drop it into a bottle like this. And then I put about 30% acetone. You'll eventually see the right thickness that you like. So I put about 30% acetone and it'll dissolve in there again, okay? I also use a little plasticizer. So there's something called TCP and DCP and the indoor used to sell this years ago and I have that. And you just use a couple of drops. Now that's pretty toxic stuff. So you can use other things like camphor oil. I believe that's what's in Duco actually. So you can get that at your local drugstore and just add a few drops, all right? And so that's my Ambroid. I, I just thought it, it's the best possible by letting it dry out first. I'm convinced that's better. So you can do the same thing with Duco and Sigmund as well. Okay. All right. Well, I wish I could get flying this thing. Unfortunately, with COVID, uh, the, there's no indoor flying right now. So we're going to have to wait and then I'll get out and get this in the air. Oh yeah, I think I'll add a little something about the motor. Okay, so I'm gonna say a few words about the motor. Now here it is, it's a 10 inch loop. It's about 0.55 grams. And one thing about uh, F1R is you gotta be careful taking it on or, and off. You can't have the rubber, you know, wound around the hook and then grab it and slide it. Uh, you gotta remember the fuselage is just a 0.001 roll tube, so it's very delicate, so I wanna be easily be able to get on a fully wound motor so here's what i do so first thing i use are these are called o-rings and here they are the, these are from ray harlan he sells them okay i like to cut my own here's some tube and get this from indoor free flight supply and make these little yellow ones whoops they show up real nice all right and but if you just even had that alone then the rubber will still bunch up in there sometimes to make it hard to slide off the hook and i don't want to have to monkey around with it at all so I also use a sleeve, all right, which is like this. And with the sleeve, I don't do anything fancy. Guess what? It's just a 16th inch thick heat shrink tubing. You can buy tons of this online. And that's all it is. And that I've used that for years. Sometimes, uh, like in the F1L, I just use the, that alone without the O-ring. But here for the uh, F1R, you really need the O-ring. And the thing about that is, you see, uh, well, I'm not sure you can see, but you can push it up against and it's and you have a nice clean hole now in the back the other thing i like to do is you know you got the knot now for my knot i've always used an overhand knot where you just go like that and then i tie a square knot on top of it because what happens is the uh overhand will push up against the square and tighten i've never had that model motor fail and i learned that back in the 60s from some airplane magazine and i've always used that knot for indoor it's always worked perfectly but here the other thing I like to do is after I have it done, here's the knot. I actually like to, you can wet it a little bit, but I like to pull the knot through the tubing so you can see the tube, uh, the, uh, you know, O-ring is nice and clear. Okay. And here's the knot. There it is right there. So it gets it out of the way. So that's just how I like to do it. Okay. So then even a fully wound motor, it's very easy. I just have to grab it. There's no bunching here at all. You just grab it, hook on the back, hook on the front. And I haven't had any problems at all with the F1R doing the motor this way. So just to show you, you need a little tool like this, even though all you really got to do is take like some .015 wire and bend it, and that's it, you're done. I just glued it to a little base and painted it red, because of course I'm going to drop it all the time. And uh, you can use, that's a puller tool, so you can use that to pull the tubing on and to put the O-rings on. So here I have one, you have to do this before you tie the motor, so I put on the rear, Okay, and I'm about to do the front. So what I did is first I slipped on the tubing and I pulled it through. And now I want to get the other end on. So all you got to realize here is you got to pull it through so the loose end is in the same direction. Okay, so I'm going to slip it in there and then grab the motor. And then there you go. And then you slide this back over the hook. Okay, and there you go. It just pulls it through. You can wet it a little bit if you want it to slide easier. And there we are. So now you can see I have the sleeve on. So then you just do the same thing with the uh, O-ring here. I don't know if I can pick it up. There it is. You put the O-ring on like that. And, uh, and you grab the rubber, slip it on, pull over the O-ring, let that go, and there you go. So now it's actually ready to be tied. So now I'll do my overhand and then the square knot. And I do this on, I have a little ruler on my uh, flight box and a hook. So I hook it on so I can get it exactly the length I want. Make sure the motor is, uh, you know, even and things like that. Okay? And then we're ready to go.
So I've never had any problem doing it this way, so I like doing it this way. Where are we? It's climbing nice, but hopefully that's it. Boy, it's freezing in here. <laughs> the heat's not on. Looks good. Oh boy, I'm hoping we just make it to the lights, but... I know, it shouldn't go much more. Damn it. <laughs> if it stays there, that would be good. Okay, I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna grab the pole just in case. I think we're good though. Boy, that's just perfect. If it just stays there, I'm gonna put the camera.